Let's add push notifications with Firebase to our Ionic application. So I have a blank Ionic app right here called FCM-Ionic, and I'm going to add the Firebase Cloud Messaging plugin. This is an unofficial Cordoba plugin, but it seems to interface with Firebase Cloud Messaging. So let's add it to the project. We can do that by saying Ionic Cordova plugin add, and then let's paste in the Cordova-plugin-fcm. We'll save that to the project as well with dash dash save. Now with this, you don't actually need to have the Firebase SDK within your application, but you will need a Firebase account on your application inside of the Firebase platform. So we've installed that. Let's now open it up inside of Visual Studio Code. Now, at the moment, if we try and run this on the device, as of this date, the 18th of May 2017, it's not actually going to work. And that's because the dependencies of the plugin are outdated and don't seem to run on my machine. It might work for you, but it doesn't work for me. So I'm going to show you how we can fix that, and then we're going to move on with the tutorial. So hopefully this will work the second time around, but what we need to do is head over to plugins. Then inside of this Cordova plugin FCM, if we head to source Android, and then inside of our FCM plugin.gradle, we have this class path of Google com GMS, which is the Google Cloud Messaging Service. What we need to do is instead of this plus, let's add a 3.0.0. .0. You could try without changing the dependencies, but for me, this doesn't work unless I do this. So once you've done that, we can then add our Android platform by saying Ionic Cordova platform adds Android. And this will add the Android platform with the changes to those dependencies. So you won't have the error that I was getting when we were creating the project. So now you can head over to Firebase and create a new Firebase application. And from within the dashboards, we can hit the notifications tab. And we can either add an iOS or an Android application to get started. Let's add an Android app. And it's now asking for an Android package name. So we need to supply a package name here, which we can find inside of our config.xml. So let's head back over to the application. And inside of here, if we head to our config.xml, and this is in the root folder, we can change the name of our package from the starter ID to something like com.pwh.push. And this is a unique identifier for your application. So make it whatever you want. And then inside of Firebase, if we then say com.pwh.push, and the nickname for the application is going to be push notifications video. And we can leave this blank. But if you do want to add things like dynamic links, Google sign in or phone number support, you will actually have to add the debug signing certificate. You can see how to generate this hash inside of the Facebook authentication video I do have within Ionic Cloud. But for now, we can click register app. So we've done that, we've registered the app inside of Firebase. We now need to download the Google services.json file. So let's do that, download the file. And then we can click continue. Here's an example here of the changes we'd had to make to that plugin. But for now, we can click finish because we've already done that. And we have to take this Google services.json and put it in the root of our project. So the file that we just downloaded, let's drag that into our project. So in the root folder, we have the Google services.json next to the config XML and the other things like package.json. So keep it just in the root. Now that we've registered our app, we can send our first message. So what I'm going to do is now run this on the device because we've set up everything we need at the moment. As long as we start a live reload server, we can continue in pushing code to the device. Let's now run Ionic Cordova run Android dash L and that dash L will make it. So if we change anything on the PC here, it's automatically updated on the device. So here we have our application and inside of the console, we can see that the Firebase cloud messaging plugin is ready. We have a token here and it received a token refresh. So we actually have give this client a token and now we can push messages out to this client. Let's now do something when we do push a message to this user. So back inside of our project and what we need to do is head over to declarations.d.ts. And this is because we'll be addressing our plugin with FCM plugin dot something and TypeScript doesn't recognize this. 
So we have to declare a variable named SCM plugin of type any. So the first thing I'm going to do is inside of the home page, I'm essentially going to add the platform and the platform is going to make sure that the platform is ready before we try and do anything with this plugin. And of course you could put this logic wherever you want, but I'm simply putting it in the home page for now. And we'll get rid of the nav controller because we're not using that. And we'll say private platform, platform, and we'll make an async function named on notification. And this is going to determine the behavior when we actually receive a notification. So we're first going to await for the platform to be ready. We'll surround this in a try catch. But when that happens, we will say FCM plugin dot on notification. And on a notification, we can get access to the data callback. And for the moment, we'll simply console dot log the data. If there are any errors, we will look at that too. And we will console dot error the error. And we can add this this dot on notification to our constructor of the home page. You could put this inside of a different lifecycle, but at the moment, if we then send a push notification to this client or all clients, we should see that notification. So let's see if we've done everything correctly. So back on that Firebase console, let's hit that send your first message button. And the message text will simply be test. And the application we want to send it to is that com.pwh.push. If we click send, we should see the results of which inside of the console. And let's try by hitting send message. So we've sent that message. And if we take a look inside of the console, we see this object come back here in home.ts with the was tapped equal to false. Now, although you can't see anything on the left here, and that's just a UI bug, that is actually the push notification coming through. I'm not entirely sure why that's coming through as an error, but at the moment, we can see that we do actually have that push notification coming through from Firebase Cloud Messaging into our application. Let's take this to the next level and make an alert appear on screen with some payload data from Firebase Cloud Messaging. So back over on our console, let's send a new message again. And I'm going to say test is the message text, but we can add some advanced options at the bottom here. And the advanced options that we can send, for example, add a title. And this is shown to the end users as the notification title. So if we said push notification test, as well as this, we can also add some custom data. So if we potentially had a message and that message was hello world, we then get that message as an object over on our application. We can also send some sound. So let's enable sound. We have to select the app once again. And if we click send message and hit send, we have the message coming through now, as well as was tapped to equal to false. And the result of our message key, the value is hello world. So we could do something like display an alert. Let's add the alert controller to the project by saying private alerts, alert controller and importing that. We could then say this dot alert dot create. And the message would be the data dot message because that's the notification message. And then we could present that to the user. So quite a simple use case once again. And if we go through and fire a message back over, you can see on our device, we then get that hello world. We no longer get that logged out to the console because we are not logging that out as instead we are showing an event, but we keep getting this error in the console saying, okay. So I have to imagine that we're doing something wrong with that error message. So instead of console.error, let's simply Change that to console.log and I'm going to change that to result. So now we have the ability to receive Firebase cloud messaging notifications on our Android device. With regards to the OK, I actually think it's more so we are looking to see whether this has been registered correctly because we've not done anything and we're getting this result logged out to the screen and we haven't even sent anything. So I have to imagine it's that. Ideally, though, what you'd want to do is use the push notification plugin to then display a push notification when we receive a notification from Firebase. 
So to wrap this video up, what we can do is send that push notification from Firebase Cloud Messaging to our application. Our application can then display that information on screen. And in the future, we'll look at how we can use the push plugin to combine these two things and display a push notification on screen to the user. In future videos, we'll also look at setting this up for iOS and the differences involved in that as well as some other push notification implementations. This is one of many. And there are other things on the market, such as the Ionic Push, OneSignal, and a few others.